Hello, I'm Luke Darcy. Welcome to Access All Areas, brought to you by OPSM. Grand final week is upon us, and with me to talk about all the big issues around a massive build-up to the grand final is Damien Barrett and Matthew Richardson. Welcome, boys. Morning. Hey, Dust. Richard. Hey, great uh, prelim finals. I want to talk first of all with both of you about the way Adelaide played against Hawthorne. Richo, is there something the Swans will take out of the style of play Adelaide brought to the table on uh, Saturday afternoon? Oh, no doubt. What they'll do is they'll look at the way Adelaide came through the corridor, Dust. They were just precision through there. It was really brave football. It could have gone either way. You turn it over there, it's a goal. But they got through and they really opened up the Hawks and the Swans will look at that. Is it fair to say we went into the preliminary final thinking it was a done deal for Hawthorne? We've come out of it. It's no better than a toss of the coin for Hawthorne. I think the gap uh, is a lot closer than perhaps uh, two weeks ago. And uh, big scare for Hawthorne, brilliantly uh, played by the Adelaide Crows. And I'm with you. I think that risk-taking mm. is a really interesting thing to do in a final because you are nervous. There's a lot more at stake with every possession. And Adelaide... You know, mark and play on stat went up 25% for them year on year, and that takes courage to do it. We'll show some vision in a while of exactly how they were rewarded for it, but I'm not sure that's Sydney's go, though. Yeah. They've always just been uh, play their, their same style, go down, be, be conservative, but maybe if they do take something out of it, it might be, all right, at some point, if we are to be brave enough to win it, let's take some risks. Would you see it that way too? I mean, is there anything that Adelaide did that the Swans can just change their own plan with and, and utilise what Adelaide did? Different sides, because the Swans don't have those big marking forwards that Adelaide have. And Adelaide wanted to play on and get it into Tippett and Walker and give them one-out chances. That happened. The Swans are not really like that. They have blokes down there competing. Robert should Thompson. they, though? I mean, should they actually use what Adelaide did and to their own advantage in some way? Should they try and change what they're doing? Or they just back I, themselves? No, to... they'll back their game plan in. But they will try and get space behind them for guys like Jetta to run into. You know what I love about finals, which shows big moments where people make a name for themselves. And uh, on Saturday afternoon, I thought it was great coaching, great individual brilliance. Sean Burgoyne, you called it in the game, Richard, one of the best clearance players we've seen in yeah. recent years. Hasn't played there a lot this year. Put himself in the middle and rolled it full forward. It was a great move. Well, that's why they're so good. And this was the other big play. I, at the game, you thought, Dangerfield will get around Stratton here now. He's that mobile. But that was just desperate. And then the ball comes down the other end and... Cyril gets on the end of it over to Buddy and desperate acts in finals win you the games and that was sensational by Stratton. Brilliant stuff it was, uh, Damo. Uh, Brad Sewell and Sam Mitchell in the third quarter when they were right under the pump and uh, down at half time, uh, stood up big time and uh, were instrumental in getting them back in front. Yeah, the work of, of Sewell, particularly in that quarter, um, Dar, six clearances individually on the quarter and Mitchell just uh, also lifted. But I know you're a big fan of Sewell. He's had a very good year, hasn't he, full stop? And, and what he did on the weekend was crucial in the context of this season. If, I feel like he's one of those players that you need to put your hand up, or I do, and, and think that I thought his best was behind him. I, yep. I didn't think that the game was going to be suited to him having the impact that he has. But great players just find a way. And players that have got that amount of uh, resilience, he's just so competitive and so consistent with his effort. You, you love them both, uh, Sewell and Mitchell, but no spot in the All-Australian team for him. Oh, I thought you might want to try and segue that in, Damo. Yes, <laughs> got it in there. <laughs> Always great at doing that, but you've got to actually take someone out. I mean, it's very hard to... You know, both of those would be worthy uh, All-Australians. And, and Mitchell's, yeah, Mitchell might win the Brownlow tonight and not be an All-Australian, which uh, in itself is, is staggering. But uh, both sensational, and I think they'd be pretty happy with their grand final spot. You just, if you want guys that are tough and hard around the footy, they work in a phone box, Mitchell, the extractor. You can't tackle them. And they get the ball out to the outside runners, and they're going to be crucial this mm. week, obviously. Richie, you, you touched on the, the corridor footy that Adelaide yeah. played. It was, it was breathtaking at times, wasn't it? Because one slight mistake, yeah. and they're gone. There's a big turnover, isn't there? I mean, yeah. this is early in the game no with doubt. Riley running it out and this results in a, in a goal but just take us through what they did and how they pulled apart Hawthorne. When you look at that there you, within your rights under pressure in a big final you might go that's too risky I'm not going into the middle there to big Tex Walker that could have been chopped off yep. it's a goal the other way but it's brave football I mean, they just again. Yep. pulled the trigger get it into the middle and once you get it in that position mm. you get the forwards out into space they can lead either way hard running from Sloan there but it's easier said than done yep. because you make a mistake and you cop it like you said before, Darcy, in the meeting, Embley the week before. Yeah, it was called the clanger of the year for yeah. Andrew Embley in the same situation. It's the Mark play on stat that went through the roof, Darmo. They've always yeah. been a side that will go through the corridor this year under Brenton Sanderson. But that play there is just brilliant stuff from Dangerfield. His last quarter was one of the best final quarters I think I've seen uh, in recent times. Um, that that technically, tactic nearly got him into a grand final. Absolutely. And, and it caused Hawthorne all sorts of troubles. Their zone defence is just so organised, yeah. but they got caught one out. They got split open right uh, throughout the day. Would they have done it? Would they have been as successful? successful with it if Luke Hodge was available for that game? 
That's the big question. I reckon at some stage there, Das, if Hodge had been playing, he would have gone behind the football and just plonked himself there and just organised everything and maybe just held Adelaide up a little bit, but he didn't play and mm. they really did miss him, I thought. He's just such a brilliant leader, Damo, isn't he? And you know that he is such a, uh, a big moment player. He would have read the game really well. He would yep. have put himself down there. And even in the last quarter, you thought you'd love him around a stoppage. He's someone who will find a way. And Have you got some more information about the, the illness? Is oh, he just going to be OK? He's legitimately really, really sick. Uh, he was on a drip on, on Friday. Um, probably more as a precaution. They felt that what they did on the Friday was going to get him up for Saturday, but woke up Saturday and just totally gone. But there's no one around Hawthorne who's close to it who thinks he'll miss this week. So he'd it's definitely a, be right this yeah, week. Yeah, that, that's what they're saying as yeah. we sta- as it stands. I'm going to de- declare an interest before this because I'm a massive fan Jared Roughhead fan. I think he's a, he's a star. But uh, Damo, you think he's tailed off a little bit uh, over the last uh, four games. And oh, you've I'm surprised, surprised these you protecting someone, Darcy. Now, just look, the, the numbers don't lie, Darcy. They never do. And just have a look uh, on the right-hand side there. These are season averages... And then we just uh, broken it down over the past uh, four games for, for Jared. Now, look, some of those stats aren't markedly different, but some are. And uh, he certainly, there's no doubt about it, has dropped off. And, and look, he, he had some clangers on the weekend, uh, some, even the figures alone. But look, this is a shot at goal, which, you know, let's face it, he, he probably misses as many as, as he kicks. So even, even the big 2008 year he had, not he used sure he a lot of goals. No, but OK, what do you call this? Is just a clanger? What, what happened? He had a few teammates uh, on the same boat. The week. Jordan Lewis dropped one that he'd normally well, take. He and I think that, uh, so a week and off, they were just rusty. Yeah, at a key time. Yeah, you, you, you can't be dropping those games, Mark Stas. No, you can't. But when you, the quality of, of Jared Ruff and the way that he plays the game, which uh, uh, the work that he does in the ruck, his uh, amount of possessions he's still getting, his defensive pressure, that's what you love about He still puts on a heap of forward pressure. And he's sort of player could stand up and kick five in the grand final and wouldn't be surprised to see it. Oh, certainly. His goals have dropped off the last month. They probably need to get at least two goals out of him on grand final day. But I'm probably not going to ride him quite as harshly as Damo has. Oh, hey, yeah, a lot of talk about the Twilight uh, game. <laughs> Uh, in the prelim final, uh, just uh, taking the whack out the, the today, Dan. Five uh, fifteen start. A lot of people, including uh, me, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. The five fifteen start came about by default. The yeah. AFL didn't really want it to happen. Hawthorne didn't want it to happen, yeah. but I reckon it's a great thing. I reckon it was great. There were a lot of kids there, more than normal, I reckon, because it, was not, it wasn't too late. They can come to the game, and it was just a fantastic atmosphere. The weather helped. It was yep. a sensational night, so that made it feel a lot better. But a lot of people were talking about it yesterday, how much they really enjoyed it. The television ratings, I believe, were just sensational. Uh, always hard to uh, hear television networks reluctant to move their news, but uh, I think that was a massive success. The crowd was You're great. big on this, aren't you? You reckon this is the, the right time for a grand final? I do, and I know it's an old topic, and it bores people to tear, but imagine how brilliant it would be. Be from a television point of view, if you kicked off at uh, 5 15 or even call it 4 15, rather than starting at a breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning that no one wants to be at, start at lunchtime. You get the uh, half time entertainment as a massive showcase because you've got the dark background. 9 30 finish is sensational. You roll into the after party. I can't believe it's not on the agenda. It, it I does add up, but you don't believe it'll happen. Oh, I, just, I, mean, I know you started the campaign, both of you, to get it as a grand final slot, but with Andrew Demetrio as CEO, just don't invest too much time with us because it won't happen. He's just adamant it will not happen under his watch, and he's here for a while now, Dars. It's so not a man that changes his it. mind easily, no. yeah, Andrew. <laughs> come on, Andrew, have a look at it. We think it's time, uh, and we've spoken on AFL.com. A uh, new vision we've got for you now hasn't been seen before. Shane Mumford, uh, we're seeing it for the first time as well. Uh, a complaint was laid, uh, Damo. Richo, this is it. Uh, Chris Dawes went in with a knee injury. Well, just, we've been just, talking about this all weekend, Damo. Just the vision here, Daw- uh, um, Richo, just behind the goals there, Mumford leaning into, into oh. Dawes, who's reacted that way. And the, and the field You're umpire comes serious, over eh? here. Dawes goes to him and complains. Now, the, the process in place now, the field umpire is obliged to report that right. even in the match report. It's not like Dawes wanted this to happen, though. It's just... A, in the heat of the battle, have yep. a look at this. So they have to then report yep. that, do they? Under the procedure that it's into the match report, and, and as such, it has to then go to the match review panel. It's, it's just a procedural. <laughs> We're not serious. This There's is in that. highly embarrassing, Damo. I know we've got we procedures, be but about it. can't common sense override procedures from time to time. Oh, but he's not allowed so. to lean up alongside Chris Dawes because he's got yep. a bandage around his knee. Well, I, I've been big uh, on, on the match review panel. I, I think needs to adjudicate almost on the run, and, and particularly for a Friday night. This was a Saturday. We're still talking about this on a Monday, and it won't get the all clear until Monday afternoon. This should have been dealt with So the big Saturday mummies night had to sit o'clock. around for 48 hours for that. That's just ridiculous. Had his really. family worried about it. I mm. mean, someone should have got hold of that Sunday and said, ridiculous, yep. never ever going to go anywhere and knock that on the head as it will be uh, this afternoon. Yep. I love Josh Kennedy. It was just in 
sensational, Richard. Yeah. Thought his performance. Uh, he'll come up against his old teammates in the final uh, in the middle, Mitchell, Lewis and Sewell will be his opponents, but he was just brilliant again and capped off a sensational year. You just don't realise how big this guy is and when you can come out as an on-baller, go forward and mark the ball on Nathan Brown, who's six foot four on the lead, just shows you how versatile and strong this guy is. Through the hips, around the stoppages, you cannot tackle him. And he's just got terrific vision and he's become a goal kicker. He kicked two goals again mm. the other night and set up a couple more. He's a complete on baller now. And it's amazing, Richard, isn't it, to have a Kennedy playing against Hawthorne yeah. in a grand final. And the heritage that this guy has got. And, I mean, his story's been well told and it's been beautifully told. But to still actually get your head around the fact that he was a Hawthorne player now playing against the Hawks in a grand final with his uh, surname. It's, what, it's, it's one of the great story. footy stories. It is. And he was absolutely pumped after the game. He was so excited to be into a grand final. The Kennedys love the grand finals and he's got a chance now and it's a really good story. We spoke off the top about the fact that the gap between Hawthorne and Sydney feels like it's closed in it's going to be a lot more even. We spoke uh, about Josh Kennedy as well. The great outside run they've got. Mm. No one better in the competition an outside run than Lewis Jetta and two of the brilliant goals we've seen this year. Just a bad goal of the year for me if it had happened in the home and away uh, season. But it should have been free kicked against him, Dust. Let's face it. I don't want to take away the romanticism <laughs> and the beauty of this. He bounced the ball three times in 90 metres. Don't know. I tell I'm you just what, calling it by the rules. I've just about had enough of you by the end <laughs> so of the year. <laughs> you are kidding yourself. It wasn't a goal. To the naked eye, oh, though, mate. did you think he'd run too far? No, I didn't. It's no, only no. when you slow it down. And that's, right. that's yeah. because he just glides. You don't realise how far he's yeah. actually travelling. It was yeah. unbelievable. So you like that goal taken from the record? Dust, would you rules mean? are rules. It's all we can live okay. by, mate. In life and in footy, it's not a goal. Yeah, well, I, live Dust, by I rules. know what you thought was funny, that poor old Nathan Brown t- chasing <laughs> you. <laughs> that is just a disaster, isn't it? For a big key position fullback. You're running long going, how did I get in this situation? You want to give up. In fact, you could have rightly uh, allowed him. Hey, the Shaw brothers uh, against each other, they ended up kicking the ball back to each other a fair bit of last night, but Reese took a bit of exception. Craig Bird was his housemate for the first three years when he moved to Sydney. He's uh, knocked him out. He's going to go over and give uh, brother Heath a bit of a spray. Tries to go again here. I reckon you should be allowed to give your brother a whack on the footy field. It should overrule the match review panel. I'm joking, Damo. I know there's rules in place and you're going to get up in arms. But uh, like it too, a nice little bit of byplay there, Richard. Yeah, well, they've been doing that forever in the backyard and I reckon Reese is just asking Heath, you know, is, did he take his tablets this morning or something <laughs> like that? Hey, Dust, um, Collingwood, it seemed, uh, when the end came, it came pretty ordinarily for them, didn't it? And they just looked pretty shot to miss, didn't they? And, and particularly coming out of the fence with some of their decision-making and, and skill execution, it was a, they butchered it, didn't they? I think they were really tired in the end. They were brave enough to get it back to 20 points, Richard Collingwood, but the two six-day breaks, the... the, the Funeral, uh, travelling yep, to Sorrento yep. and all that. I think it just took its toll in the end. Take nothing away from Sydney. I thought their pressure and the way they played was great, but they did look pretty tired. Yeah, they did. And I think you could tell very, very early in the game that they just didn't have the energy and the run that the Swans had. Totally understandable. We know the circumstances, the breaks, and the emotion of what was going on at Collingwood. And this came late in the game. They yeah. sort of had a bit of a surge, but when this went out on the well, fall from Harry O'Brien, that was... Well, I reckon it? when you get tired, your concentration goes, and some of those skill errors, that can be concentration as well. Yep. Two big fitness tests that will take place uh, this week. Uh, ben McGlynn from Sydney coming back from a hamstring and also Brent Guerra from Hawthorne. Where do we sit? Uh, do you risk it and how likely are they to play? I, I, I think there's just no chance at all, Dust. Just because of the coaches involved here, they're not going to be taking risks on guys who are risks. And uh, that's my take. Yeah. I don't know what you think. but it's, It is a big risk to go in with a hamstring into a grand final. What they'll both do is they'll train tomorrow, they'll train fully, they'll give it everything to try and prove to the match committee that they're fit to play. But... I find it unlikely that they will. Dr. Dr. Peter Larkin said on a Saturday night uh, after the game that they're less than 5% chance, both of them. Yep. Really gets it wrong, Doc. And yep. I think that's about right. You try and uh, rip the hamstring off the bone on the on the hope that it does come through, and I, I, I think that is very unlikely. They're, they're both loved by their clubs, aren't they? And McGlynn's particularly unlucky, <laughs> given he couldn't get into the it Hawthorne Premiership heart, team. And it happens yeah. every grand final, what you sit yep. there, and it's a shocking story. I mean, he left Hawthorne, didn't he? Because he couldn't get into that team that won in 08 and, and was unlucky that year. I and think you look at both their reactions. Brent Guerra punched. The, 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 he knew straight away and Ben yeah. McGlynn was uh, you know, in tears. They both knew exactly what it meant and they're trying their hardest but uh, not sure it's going to happen. Time for our OPSM poll question for this week. Head to our AFL Facebook page to register your vote on 
The preliminary final losses, Collingwood and Adelaide, who will finish higher next year? Let us know, will it be the Pies or the Crows? And we'll have the result of the poll on Friday's Access All Areas. So, uh, Richard and Dama, who is going to climb the ladder more next year? Will it be the Pies or the Crows? I reckon it'll be the Crows. I think they're on the way up. They've got two big... Well, they're going to maybe lose a key forward, which will mm. hurt. But they've got a, a match winner in Tex Walker. And they're still a young side developing. I think they'll be really good next year. Yeah, I share the same view. I reckon if they keep Tippett, and he had his best game for two or three years on, mm. on the weekend, didn't he? I think they keep him, they'll be further up the ladder than Collingwood. Had the best draw that anyone's ever had in the history of the game, Adelaide. I think they'll get a tougher draw next year. I think they might find next year a little bit tougher. And yeah. I, I think Collingwood uh, can reload, rebuild, hang on to Travis Clark. I think Collingwood will be in front of Adelaide next year. Quick Brownlow tip for tonight. Yeah, look, I think I'm going to go for Scotty Thompson. They won 17 games this year. Thompson and Dangerfield are going to get a lot of threes and twos, so I'm going to go with Scotty. Yeah, I agree with you. I reckon Scotty Thompson um, polls yeah. OK in the past and had his best year, I reckon, and <laughs> finished second on the ladder. Scotty Thompson for me too. Cochin is the one that I would love to see win. I just think he's an right. absolute jet, and I think you might uh, find that he will be the winner at the end of uh, tonight. Thank you to uh, Damo and to Richo. Great stuff from you. Don't forget to click back on our AFL.com.au Facebook page and head to the Friday edition of Access All Areas and with Damo and the player of the century, Lee Matthews, for the latest news and opinion on the big game next week. We'll be back next Monday to discuss all the fallout from the grand final. Until then, it's goodbye.